Jenny. Welcome to See Jenny Cruise. We are about to board Quantum of the Seas in Seattle. We love Seattle. This is our first time on Royal Caribbean anything out of Seattle. And so here we go. We're with a group of dear friends. And just a little note, my husband had a veteran's hat on. They put us in the line to get on quicker. We thought our friends had already boarded, but they hadn't. And we didn't know it till we were already on the ship. So that was a little oops, but that was very kind of them to think of us and put us on. So we got on the ship very quickly, um, came in, gave us great directions. There's an app that you'll use to do the muster drill, which was a different experience for us, but it was pretty easy. So we had already done what we were supposed to do. We're coming in here, we're on deck five. Look at the butterflies going up. This is a beautiful elevator bank. We really enjoyed the uh, decor inside Quantum of the Seas. This area has some video panels at the top that will change and they have butterflies. And coming into this beautiful area was our muster drill. Uh, we were waiting in line for, oh, literally, I hear you'll see, it's like less than a minute as we were waiting in line and to do our very brief look at the app, make sure we had looked at the things we were supposed to. Look at this beautiful centerpiece here. It was just lovely. And now we've met up with our friends here. We're in 270 where we will go to an evening performance later on. This is a cool area. There's a cafe right nearby where we were able to get a bite to eat. And this is also where we hung out before we disembarked seven days later. But it's a nice, we are headed to our cabin. We're on deck nine. We were in cabin 660 and we were really happy with this cabin. Here you see the temperature control and it worked well for us and then common to many cabins you have to have a card inside that slot in order to make the air conditioning work and the lights work bathroom met our needs like having this this door instead of a shower curtain um, I would say that the the uh, shampoo and things inside there aren't the best you might want to bring your own but the bathroom was adequate we appreciated it we really like there's a night light in that bathroom I liked this basket, uh, extra basket hanging on the door there. That was very convenient. So there's a closet on either side of the bed, very small nightstand, but a place you can get your phone charger in. And above the bed, there are two cabinets, a full length mirror here, a um, little space. Now this TV, it's kind of interesting. It doesn't pull away. You can't put it to the left or the right, but your bed's here. Your couch is on the other side. If you wanted to sit in front of the TV, it's kind of an interesting experience. Here's the phone. Again, that little night light there with the place to plug in. And then, like I said, you're straight here. You can't move that TV at all. I thought that was kind of an interesting configuration. Here's another closet. Um, we enjoyed having this space here. You have a little desk, a little vanity area. And then here, I really want to be able to move that. TV. I really did. There was a little uh, cubby right below that TV as well. You could put like the remotes and things. And so here we are. Um, we really enjoyed the day that we uh, got on the ship. It was a little uh, cloudy, but that's okay. We still loved exploring it. Just a typical cabin here with a another area to hang clothes this had a longer area with drawers underneath and then we had the cubbies like i said up above the couch was pretty hard i'll tell you here you had plenty of storage i thought i thought they did really well and then we bought these bottles of water i may tell you about that another time but the picture in the app shows that you're getting a different brand it says you're getting avion and that is not what we got but we did find these really cool carriers that we inflated to put our wine bottles on that we brought on. And that little cooler refrigerator, it worked. It, it was sufficient. So here we are sliding out. Like I said, it was kind of a cloudy day, but the chairs worked. It This, by the way, this cabin 660 on deck nine has a deeper balcony. It's covered. So wherever this ship is, even if you were somewhere it was going to be sunny, uh, you would have adequate coverage, but especially for Alaska, where if you had rain, we weren't going to be rained on, but we could still be on our balcony. I showed you just below a moment ago, you see the the lifeboats down below. Um, it, as you looked out, you really didn't see them so much. I was a little concerned about that, but we really enjoyed this cabin. Like I said, we had friends on either side of us, and we would often meet out here. I could reach out and, oh, look, there's one of our friends. Hello. 
All right, now we are on deck 14 and we're here for sail away, but look at the top of your screen, you'll see the North Star, which is unique to the quantum ships. And we were all very excited about getting to get this 360 degree view at sea or 300 feet above the sea. We were so excited. We booked weeks in advance and disappointed when we found out it was going to be out of service the entire time we were on the ship. Here you're looking at the kids area, the H2O zone, and we're going by, it's sail away. Now we haven't sailed as much on Royal as we have some other cruise lines. And so of course the weather's kind of, uh, you know, dreary. It was a little on the chilly side. This is Seattle, but look, there are people in the pool. Clearly not the same as a Caribbean uh, cruise, but still plenty of people looking at the handful of people that are actually showing up to do the dancing for sail away. Now we're going up to deck 15 uh, to <laughs> look around for our camera, I guess. Anyway, we're heading back to try to get the view of Seattle. We had been in our cabin and didn't even realize we had left the pier right away. And so we were hurrying up to get these shots so we could enjoy the view. Obviously kind of a cloudy day. This piece of land here is heading up uh, shoreline and Linwood, which is north of Seattle. You're going to see the Washington coastline as we head out uh, for a couple of hours after you leave Seattle, as long as it's still daylight. You move up between the small islands uh, that are right off the coast of Washington. Oak Harbor will come up that way. We'll end up moving into the Strait of Juan de Fuca, and then we'll end up about an hour outside of Seattle, maybe an hour and a half. You'll end up with Washington on the port side, and you'll have Canada on the starboard side as you move out into the Pacific Ocean. So it's an interesting uh, exit. If you've never been out of Seattle before, we enjoyed it. It's a lot better than some areas where you don't have anything to look at for a while. And here in the back, you can see we're looking at the skyline of Seattle. It really um, was, it wasn't very chilly really. This is late August. Um, we could see the rock climbing wall there, the pink bear, I think it's a bear, uh, standing there by the rock climbing wall. It wasn't too busy. We saw people uh, there most of the time and we had really pretty good weather. Maybe not bright sunny days all the time, but our weather was pretty good. And we really enjoyed looking at this iconic skyline. There's one of the ferries uh, that they have going all over this area around Seattle and Tacoma, this part of the Pacific Northwest. And uh, that's a great way, by the way, if you come in a day or so early, you could take a ferry ride in the Seattle area. Um, there are some nice restaurants around this whole area. You see the port of Seattle here, the iconic uh, stadiums and there it is we're looking here for the Space Needle trying to zoom out there it is on the left hand side of your screen we enjoyed doing some of the tourist activities in the Seattle area the days before this cruise with our friends if you'd like some tips comment below and I'd be happy to get back to you one of the things we really appreciated was the veterans acknowledgement they had this special on the first sea day and they did a great job with it, it was a uh, you had the live band there playing the all the music for the different branches of the armed services. And this gentleman is head of security on Quantum of the Seas. He's been with Royal Caribbean for decades, has a bit of a sense of humor. And each branch of service stood up to be acknowledged during while their uh, theme was playing. And this young man had his dad stand up. It was pretty touching. Here is what the weather looked like. I wanted you to have an idea of what you might expect. Really, in the summer, you might have uh, bluer skies, but look, see the blue skies there, it's just peeking up above. But this is pretty much what it looked like most of the time we were out on the Pacific Ocean. Now, we're going to be talking, and later on here in a few minutes, we'll show you when we did glimpse some whales, but it is hard like if you want to be able right to there. see something here you're going to need binoculars right definitely going to need some binoculars and i'm pointing at something but you can't really see it look we're zooming in as tight as we can yeah i don't know if you can see it but the whales you can see their spouts going off um it was hard to get these shots we really had to zoom in i have a, a decent lens that i was able to capture these but some of our friends were out on the balcony most of the trip, and I would say they saw whales pretty much every day. Uh, but again, they might be out in the distance. They're not up right next to the ship. Here, I wanted you to see we did have a sunny day. This was a pretty picture. Now, we went to the shows. Uh, here, we're watching sequins and feathers. 
I believe we saw this on the first night. You didn't have to book in advance, but I believe we did for this one. There was plenty of seating available. Like I said, this was late August though, so in the middle of summer, you might need to book in advance. We also went to another show that we'll have clips of here in a moment, and that one you absolutely have to book in advance because it's in 270, which does not have the same seating capacity. And so um, we enjoyed the shows. They weren't our very favorite, but um, we like the experience of having, especially on an elegant evening or a formal night, uh, going to a nice dinner and then going to a show. We like that experience. So 270 is on deck five. This is a really cool artistic feature up there hanging from the ceiling, isn't it? Um, as you walk across here, you're going to be able to look down and see the Royal, Royal Esplanade where the shops are down below. Uh, this is where Wonderland is. I just saw a peek of that. But we liked this area. We like the ceiling and how it lets natural light in. Uh, that's, that's nice. This was generally a busy area as it is on most Royal Caribbean ships. Now across the way there you see the Bionic Bar. I think I may have another shot of this coming up here later. That was a disappointment for us because like um, we, some other things we were looking forward to doing, like the North Star, we were looking forward to trying the Bionic Bar, and it was closed the entire cruise. We noticed recently that we were reading another blogger, and they were saying that it was also closed for them as well as the North Star. So just something to keep in mind, Royal Caribbean. <laughs> People are looking forward to some of these things. You might want to offer them, I don't know, some alternative. Since they can't use the Bionic Bar, maybe suggest another place versus just having a sign saying we're not open right now because they weren't open for seven days. Anyways, we walk around here. Uh, we never ate at Itsumi. Uh, we understand it was good. I and mean, Next time, we might try that. We did, however, invest in the chef's table with our group of friends. And we've done this on other ships. By the way, this is the best bread I've ever had. <laughs> a deconstructed salad. That was a scallop. Um, appetizer here it was all very good this is the gazpacho we really enjoyed it this is the sea bass all of it was really excellent and one of our friends who doesn't eat seafood they accommodated that the steak was very very good the, so was this martini this espresso martini and the chocolate dessert you can't go yeah. wrong with that uh, funny enough we saw exactly the same dessert at chops and the same dessert or very similar at wonderland we'll tell you about that in a moment but it's fun it's always fun everyone enjoyed watching the melt in front of them and the so we enjoyed our time with our friends at the chef's table. Here's the 270 Theater, the venue here. We're watching Star Water, which is a show that's very popular. You have to book in advance uh, to get the seating times that you would like to have. And so we booked weeks in advance. It's available to reserve on the first day of the month before the sailing through the Royal Caribbean app or online. And then once you're on board, you can also book, but the seating times you're looking for may not be available. You don't have reserved seating. You have an entrance into the venue to watch the show. Uh, the robotic screens in the background were really engaging. They helped with the media and making you feel more immersed.